So down to our last couple sections, I do want to cover the user interface because the CA series takes such a novel approach to this. It's basically like using a smartphone or like an Android uh, tablet, little mini tablet embedded right in the instrument. Um, the other cool thing is when you use the companion app to control this from an iOS device or an Android device, it's exactly the same program as it's embedded in the control device on here. So there's no difference in how you would navigate it, whether you want to use it from the side panel or whether you're going to want to use it from your, uh, from your phone. So either way, you're basically getting a snapshot of what it would look like uh, when we're going to explore it right now. So there are three navigational areas uh, to be aware of to access all of your musical uh, features on here, and it's right along the bottom. So you've got your piano area, your sounds, which brings up all of your other areas, um, and then uh, your music, which includes the ability to access lesson books, uh, composer, USB media player. Uh, so let's take a look at the piano section. You'll see where it's got SKEX Competition Grand up front. Uh, if you want to edit uh, what's going on with that piano, you're actually going to press the up button here, and this is where you're going to get your editing menu. So right up top in the rendering, and this only appears with your SKEX and SKEX Competition, this is where you're selecting these various mix downs of your multi-dimensional recordings. So classic is the default, then you've got brilliant, romantic, and I'll just quickly play for you what these are sounding like as we're going through. So this is classic, brilliant, romantic, Rich, which is kind of a favorite of mine. Vintage. Concert. Jazz. And mellow. So that is how you're selecting essentially your tonal source. Then you're down into your various uh, presets for your, uh, they call it Virtual Piano Artisan, AKA Virtual Technician. And this is where it's going to be affecting things like key noise, damper noise, um, you know, lid open, lid closed, pedal noise, um, all those different, I think 19 different parameters that you can affect. So these are presets, uh, rather than having to edit those all individually. So soft, light resonance, historical. But if you find ones like, oh, that's almost, but I'd love to get in there and play even more, edit. Now you're adjusting everything one by one. So this is where your touch curve would be, your voicing, uh, your string resonances, your damper noise, undampened string resonance, cabinet resonance, Hammer delay, top board, decay time. There's a lot of stuff in here. Finally, you've got your ambience, your tuning, and your transpose. And you can save that preset down in your bottom right corner. User sound name, you can assign that a name, and then it's saved. You never have to edit that again. Super handy. Um, for navigating through the different pianos in here, this one I had to figure out. Um, swiping um, can be a little bit inaccurate because it's very easy to skip sounds. 
Um, but if you just tap to the right or to the left, then it's super accurate. You're always going to just move one over. Easy to do. And there's your upright piano. So that's essentially all you need to know to navigate through your main piano section. Sounds is a completely different environment. Um, and they've done it in two ways. They've got these categories up top, recently played, recommended, concert, jazz, pop, which, you know, I personally have not found to be like super helpful, but some people may find that to be an interesting way to navigate the instrument. Um, more useful is using the categories down the left side, and those are done by these little icons. Uh, so you've got your grand piano tones, then you've got your electric piano sounds. Then you've got your organ, your electric organ. Keep forgetting to select. And then church organ, and I mentioned this on the 701. Uh, there's a huge selection of really well sampled uh, authentic pipe organ tones uh, that are loaded on the 701 and 901. So you've got you know, church organ, diapason, full ensemble. So on. Uh, you've got harpsichords, then you've got mallet instruments, uh, you've got stringed instruments, uh, choir and pad, electronic pad, bass, uh, and guitar. And those are all navigable um, by your left icon. And then, as we said, we've got music. So you can uh, play a whole bunch of preloaded uh, music sorted by composer. So you can go through there. And then there are further settings, which allows you to get into your speaker uh, headphone, so your con tone control, essentially your EQ, your low volume balance. If you are going to be playing in a lower volume, I don't recommend that, but they've made accommodations for that. Your speaker volume, your speaker character. There's some shaping going on if you, uh, if you want. And then you've got wall EQ. If you're going to have it pushed up right against a wall, it trims off some um, of the highs and certain frequency ranges that tend to slap back a little more harshly when you've got it up against a wall. And then you've got your spatialized headphone options, headphone type, and your headphone volume. So that's all within uh, your settings menu. Your forehand mode if you want that, Bluetooth settings, independent Bluetooth volume, which is actually really handy and sometimes not present on certain uh, digital pianos, your user data, and finally, you can get into your system for things like auto power off, your startup screen. So very easy to navigate. I think they've done a really nice job of cleaning up this interface to be probably one of the most intuitive and user-friendly interfaces of any digital piano on the market. <laughs>